Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Phil and in today's video it is the start of the calf rearing season already all of a sudden and are we ready no but that never changes that seems to be the same every year but before we go too much further in the video don't forget to hit that like button hit the subscribe button ring the bell so you get notified of my videos every thursday and sunday we may go back to choose the video see how we go on when we get into march but anyways so as you can see it we calves have arrived they arrived yesterday evening we quite literally we're in the middle of taking the straw out of the shed and the cows arrived and we had to get gates together and we just literally threw it together just to, to get the calves unloaded so Liv had to feed them last night we have our automatic feeder we got it serviced all new piping in the lines everything is good that way we still have to get the other feeder done but we can't redo really it till we get hits up in the other shed and the other shed's still full of wayland so they have to get rid of it we got help before we can do anything so what I have to do now is I have to calibrate the feeder. That's one thing that hasn't been done. So I have to calibrate the amount of water in the bowl so the machine knows how much is in it. Calibrate the amount of powder it puts out so the machine knows. Calibrate the temperature. There are the three things I have to calibrate. So that's what I have to get done. But anyways, so yeah, we have eight little Frisian and Jersey and I think one Angus. I think, I think he's an Angus or she, I don't know. The rest are free FRXs and Frisians and maybe a JEX on I'm not sure. But that's them. The year does not belong going round. So it does not. We can nearly divide some of my videos up into times of year when, when the video goes out then you know, Jesus, it's that time of year again. And this is one of them things. Calves back on the farm. We'll also be going to pick up calves tonight. Another 20 so the shed won't be long filling up. So I'll just show you what we've done with the shed. As we have it set up now bar to bring in a lock of gates. And just leave the thing kind of set up better so we have to get a hanging gate brought in and put in here like we always have had for a training pen uh come on let me out so because we're on square bales this time rather than rounds so we have our chicanes put in now we still have to shake out bales of straw just for bedding so we have our chicane chicane there chicane there and chicane down here and then two bales for bedding and then we have a wall of straw on the outside. So, so basically the same as we've done every other year, but it's with round, square bales of straw instead of round bales. So it kind of has a nicer job done there because square bales stack much, much nicer than rounds. So it should keep any low drafts or that out. Also with the square bales, there's no net. Because there was one year, two years ago, we didn't take the nets off the bottom bales. The calves were eating net and it was blocking them up. But I don't think that's going to be an issue with the twines. We have to put some gates in there just to keep them away from the bales of hay. We don't want them nibbling the nets on the hay. And that's just really it. They should set up then. So there's not too much left to do. Liv will be doing it later on and I'll give her the camera. As once I get the feeder calibrated, me and Father Phil are going off. So anyways, so. Uh, live and we have a student working uh, for the week as well Victor he'll give Liv a hand just finishing up the calf shed when he gets there Liv will have the camera so she can do it show you we have our Elvor Liv, Elvor adapter in the thing let's we'll see is there many cows fed it's our curiosity so he hasn't fed that's one fed two fed three fed so there's three, three of the eight calves have fed themselves already. And there's one guy in there feeding away himself. So while I'm calibrating, they can't feed. But anyways, we'll get to that so that I can get going again. And yeah, calves. You forget how small they are every year. You just forget how small they are. And Nelly hasn't seen them before, have you? You've never, this is your first calf rearing season, isn't it Nelly? Oh, you're going to get fat on calf poo, you are. You are. Just like Bertie does every year. So suppose for those of you that don't know how the feeder works. So now all the calves have an EID tag, an electronic tag in their left ear. I'm trying to annoy them. So it's like a big button. And this here reads the tags in the calves. And then that tells the feeder that's calf 849. And then the feeder says, right, 849, you haven't fed, starts feeding them. 
and then it basically just pumps the milk out through the line through the solenoids into the bowl it fills the bowl up calf can drink when the float there's a float in the bowls and when the float goes down then it knows to refill it and then it counts how many fills gives the calves 1.5 liters so the calves when they come in start off on four four liters of milk a day and they build up to seven liters of milk within 14 days and they can drink one and a half liters every eight four hours and yeah that's that's what they do and then they start to be weaned off at the 44 i think to or could be earlier i have to check but that's that's the basics of the calf feeder it's very 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 useful yeah we couldn't wear cows without them at this stage, especially the numbers that we rear but anyways i think he might have the bowl emptied here now yeah it's fairly well so we'll carry out calibration Just thinking about it to calibrate <coughs> the rest of the feeder i need to open up take out my calibration tool so scoop the weighing scales it's quite dirty and thermometer so <clears throat> the bowl is now recalibrating water empties it out and then you can see now 855 mil on the 15 seconds so i have to do that three more times take the average pop it in and then that's the water recalibrated the machine works on how many seconds it pumps in water for and then how full the flow goes up that's that's how the machine works and knowing how much it puts out so stick it in it read what the temperature comes out as should be around 45 i think is what we're aiming for it's at 40. so put that into its calibrations i get my scoop put my scoop in there Mm, just under 70 69 ish back in we'll do it again see what we get that's 72 one more time that onto that that's 72 so it's 69 72 72 so the average is 70 70 and a half so that's the feeder calibrated that's half the calves now are fed or even more so all i'll do is put in a few extras and all right oh geez ye are tiny ye are i'm going to head off now spread slurry leave live with the camera Liv will show you a bit more throughout the day she might show you feeding the calves and then tonight when i get back we'll be getting the trailer we'll be going for the next load of calves we won't find having that full and needing to find somewhere to put that hay so yeah fun but anyways the joys of the time of the year so we have three calves that didn't feed overnight which means five went in all by themselves so i have one in this is eight four eight he's having a drink and bertie's having fun nelly is not so sure on the calves this is nelly's first season Calf number one is trying to get more. Yeah. So this is calf number three in the feeder. The hose pipe just reaches. So just setting up a foot back. I sent from Gambia Connect, Cyclex. So, as you can probably tell, we have a new to us trailer. Now, we haven't bought it yet. We have the use of it to see how we like it and how it pulls behind L200. 
but it's a tough, tough Mac trailer. I can't even tell you how long it is, I don't know. But there's a big difference between that trailer and what we used to use. So yeah, we anyway, was ready to go get calves now. So we go get them. It's the first load of calves we Ooh, time out bar. So what do you think of the new trailer, Liv? It's great. It's great. Yeah. It's like a new one. It is. It's it's a couple of months old. But two years old. Is that two years old? Yeah. But we, as I said, we've the use of it to see how we like it pulled behind L200. We like it. And we'll probably be buying it. Because as you can tell, <laughs> that whole jalopy there, it's pulled a lot of cattle. That trailer is actually 22 years old. The bought in 2000. So I, I think it's about time we got a new one, isn't it? If we could just get a new Jeep now, we'd be laughing. Or I don't, people don't like me saying Jeep. What do you, crew cab? Yeah. yeah. Because Jeep is American. Pick up. Pick up. Dano? Yeah, you don't want too much, do you? No, you don't, no. Right. That's the first calf loaded for transportation. So, we're just in McDonald's outside of Athlone and um, getting ourselves an old McDonald's. So, Liv got a wrap. I got an old triple cheeseburger. I actually got two of them because they're good value. And fun fact, we our cattle go to the factory that supplies McDonald's with their beef. So, not promoting anyone, but you never know. You have a McDonald's, you might be trying some of our best of the Frisians. You might be having some of our beef. But anyways, as we eat this and we'll be on to the farm. So, oh. that's us back. So now it's time to sort out what we're we going to do, Liv. I'm going to push these back for a minute. Push these back and then let the 30 calves and go the down there. Yeah, but but we have to, Yeah, we have to. Do we have enough gates? Yeah. We do. We can take one of the ones from down there. Okay. Right. Let's do that then. That has to be untied there. Yeah. Oh my God. That was tied. Daddy tied that. <laughs> it's untieable. Do you, you know, you don't need to open that. Leave that. What we do? Climb in. Leave that. What you gotta do? Use that gate, the spare gate there, and that gate there along the bill. Talk about tight. Just yeah. not a wire. Now that's open. Where are you going with that now? Shut it with that. Hey, Sucky, you're finished. Go on. No, you won't. So that's just nearly ready. But Liv has this multi tied gate. It's trying to hit me in the face now. See? It's in the way. Anyways. Whew. No suckies. Some friends. We're we'll trying to get calves off the trailer. Where's the best place to put this? Someone's trying to jump across the bales. We we'll get the other half out. So because there's a trailer or split door, so having 30 all together, just in case they squash each other, we'll put 15 either side. Tom might be a bit easier, but we'll get these ones out. Here we go, these are 30 new calves. So we've 38 calves now, all of a sudden. So there's an Angus on this, a Solaire. Pretty sure that's the Solaire. And there's an Aubrac as well. So, now I'm gonna have to get these lads out of here. Come on, come on, get out of here, come on. You went the wrong way, lads. 
So we have to keep these ones separated from these ones. These ones have the ID tag, work away. These ones have no tag, or they have their tags, but they've no button tag, electronic tag. So these will all have to be tagged and individually fed in the morning. So there'll be a fair bit of work, but we'll show you that. Yeah, there's not much else to say, is there, Liv? No. You're happy out, you have more calves. Happy out. You're easy pleased, aren't you? <laughs> right, what do we need? Secretaires, buttons, yeah, there's enough. Get started. Right, we'll go get these calves on. And this is the fun part about EID tags. You put calf in, calf registers, no bother. When it comes to calves with no EID tags, you have to put in button tags, you have to cable tie it into their ears. What's the number? 30? 54. 54. And we'll have to manually put in all the numbers. No, it's in. So it is tedious, slow, and all the all the above. So Liv has the centers taken out of the button tag so we can put in the cable tie. And we just cable tie it to there. It saves having to tag them with the button tag as it just the less tags you put in the calves here, the easier. Because sometimes you can hit some of the tendons in the ear and they can get infections in that, so we just avoid it if we can. Liv is going to do the groundwork, I'll do the, the book work, or do you want to do the book work? I'll do a few on this one. Okay, do you want to feed them as we go through it? Yeah. Right, well, we'll put this down on time lapse and we'll try and get through these. It's going to take a while. This will be the last year that we'll have to do these as it's now compulsory in Ireland to have an EID tag and that's why you'll see some finished. of the calves in that pen with the white tag. Morning. Morning. Hello. Is he finished? Uh, you finished? Yes, both of them are finished. Oh, you were sick. Not sick enough. Over here, you do this. Yeah? Eric, 345. Are you in putting that into the machine too, bro? No. You're supposed to. I've got two in since then. Have you? Yeah. Oh, for f***. <laughs> so, so all, all you do is you put your finger in. Yeah, yeah. Just, you get yeah. them to su suck your finger and then get them to pull onto the tit. Bro, you do what Victor was doing if he hasn't done it. Okay. Right. Are all these parts in now? So now, that is all the calves fed. They're all snug as a bug in a rug in there. So we'll not, we'll not get in and annoy them. There's one to come in there to feed himself. Yeah, there's milk in it there, go on. So that's, that's really it. There's not much more to do in the video. So when it comes to the vaccination program, uh, these will be up for vaccinating now tomorrow. Uh, we'll be giving them pasteurella under the skin, or it's a Spovipast RSVP, I think it is, or RVP. They get that and then these will be done after two or three days. You give them two or three days after they're moved on to the farm to make sure that the antibodies in them from the stress of being moved doesn't affect the vaccine. We'll also be, this year we'll be using the IBR vaccine as well because we want to see if that makes much of a difference, bring down the mortality rate. So we'll be IBR in them, I think two weeks after they come in to not do the two vaccines at once is what we were advised to do and yeah. That's really, and now I know people were waiting to see the video I was going to do on the future dairy calf and talk about dairy calf to beef and all that, and I know I didn't get it done, and it's a bit late now to be doing it, but the three biggest tips I have to anyone who's thinking of going rearing calves is Angus cattle, a lot of Angus calves that's on the market are very poor calves, very, very poor calves. They're, a lot of them aren't worth the money they're making. British regions are way too overrated. You have a good grade, but you have a shocking bad way in animal. And if you pay too much the first day for the calf, you're never going to make any money. And that's, that's the third one. I know everyone's out there to make a living, but if you pay too much for the calf the first day, you're, you're never, you're, you, you, set your, you set yourself up to fail. So that's the three top tips I have for you. 
in, I suppose it's just in picking calves, there's more in rearing and all that, but I suppose you'll pick them up as we go through this calf rearing season. Oh yeah, it's all started again, that time of the year in calves. But end of this week now, there'll be 100 calves in that shed, and hopefully the weather settles. So we need to get the calves out of the other, or the whalings out of the other shed so we can get the next calf feeder set up. So this video was sponsored by Herdwatch, which is the farm app for recording everything we're doing the farm. We've been using it for four years now, five years. We've used it a long time. And when it comes to the calves now, we'll be able to record our vaccinating on it and our movement permits. Move, doing the movement permits on Herdwatch is very, very handy. You put in your movement permit, the, the, you put in your movement number, it brings up the list of calves that you on the permit. You go through your pen, you double check that you have the calf, the card, and it's on the permit. So you get the three of them ticked off, because it wouldn't be the first time you'd have a calf on the permit, you'd have no card and no calf, or you'd have a calf that's not on the permit. And yeah, it just saves a lot of that messing early on. And it's a great way of, of moving the calves, because you catch it at the start, because you can do it in here, in the pen, with them rather than doing a Honda computer at home. So big thanks to Herdwatch for sponsoring today's video. If you want to learn more or check it out for yourself, it'll be links in the description down below. Anyways, we're going to leave it at that for today's video. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. Videos every Tuesday, sorry, every Thursday and Sunday. Maybe we'll get back to Tuesday videos. Then that is it for me. Good luck.